create a motion video. Here, do you want me to bring them over? Alright, let's give a little tour here. So let's see. We got, wait, wait, wait. We got Velcro on the front. Velcro under the belly here. And I got my two elastic straps. And then for his back, it comes up and it it fastens right here with Velcro. And he's got a removable little bum flap as well for his tail. And that way when he uses the washroom, it doesn't touch the fabric. And this has two straps that comes right between the legs, which um, go on each side of his little balls there <laughs> that got snipped. So this worked really, really well. And you look like a big banana. Hello, hello, welcome back. So as I said, I gotta keep myself busy because Zeus is currently at the vat. He's getting his tail amputated from an injury and he's also getting neutered at the same time. So the vet recommended so that he keeps his sutures alone, um, putting a t-shirt over him that'll protect his little manly area. I've looked online on Amazon and I wish I ordered this ahead of time so that I had it on hand, it's a recovery suit, which is basically like a bodysuit, and then it has Velcro that goes right behind their bum, the tail sticks out and it Velcros underneath. So while I'm home trying to keep busy, I am going to maybe come up with something on my own. Now I don't have Zeus with me so I can't measure him, but I did find <laughs> this super cute little fairy thing that I forgot I had for him. Um, so I know that this already fits him now obviously well it would be really funny if I did make him wear this for like eight weeks <laughs> I could call him my little butterfly <laughs> but um, I'm just gonna use this as a pattern and I'm going to cut out my own pieces in my own fabric and then I'm gonna come up with some form of a little diaper pouch just with velcro attachments that can velcro around it I'm not sure how I'm gonna do that yet but I'm going to show you what I'm going to do. So I have this paper here. It's actually a medical paper that you lay over top of a medical bed. Doctors usually use this. Um, I got a hold of this because it's also for aesthetic beds, uh, just to keep your bed sanitary. But I, um, I bought extra rolls because I use it for sewing. That's what I write my, my patterns on before I cut my pieces out. You can already kind of see that was from a dress. <laughs> So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open this up uh, because this is going to be a gauge for the right size. Now the main piece, if you can see that here, is this right here. So the pink border goes along and then these straps are separate. So I'm just going to use my uh, little pencil here and I am going to trace along the outer side. Now. You do turn your seams in, um, so I'm going to retrace afterwards with an extra half an inch on each side just so I can have a nice finished edge. That's just taking into account the seams when you go to cut it out. And there, and then it goes down here like so. And I'm going to move this little part here back and trace along the seam of the pink neckline here. Now I don't need this to be super, super perfect because I'm just going to go down here because I'm actually going to be cutting it down the center and I'm gonna put it against my folded seam for the fabric. So I will show you what that looks like. Okay, so here's what it looks like once I have cut it out. I did a lot for my seam allowance because I will be folding uh, this raw edge inwards once the fabric is cut out to get a nice finished edge. So I'm just going to go ahead and mark um, what my pieces are. So this here, sorry, I'm doing this one-handed. <laughs> I'm going to write, cut, let me use my foot here on fold and this is going to be the shoulder and this down here is the bottom 
Right, next up is the strap. So I'm going to need two straps. So I'm just going to mark this out, the outer shape. And I'm sorry I'm doing this one-handed because I have the camera in my other hand. But this will give me a guideline now because it is for a dog and I'm doing this very quickly today. Um, I'm not really too concerned about this being very professional, clean, lined, uh, fleece lined, whatever. I'm just looking to get a template done. At least that way I will have my pattern so that once Zeus is home and I try this on him, I will have a better idea on what modifications I need to make or size improvements. So I'm going to cut this out leaving my seam allowance just so I have a little extra and I'm going to mark this as straps side straps and I'm going to say cut I actually need uh, either four pieces or what I'm going to do is cut on fold and that is because this is double-sided so by cutting it on the fold I will have a nice big rectangle piece like this that I will fold in half and I will then have this size which again doesn't need to be perfect because it will all be velcroed. All right, so a nice cheap alternative for fabric is a bed sheet because it is nice and big. You can get them at thrift stores. I happen to have this yellow one on hand, so I'm going to give this a quick iron just so that when I cut it out, it's relatively straight and not kind of zigzaggy for no reason. I could avoid that. And the nice thing about a bed sheet is that it already has a finished edge, so this is already double sided. So for the straps, I'm just actually going to cut the length that I need and just um, finish the edge. But otherwise, I already have a double-sided rectangle. Okay, so now here's what I'm going to do. I have a cutting mat, so I'm going to put it over my cutting board here. If you don't have one, don't go out and buy one. This is all about doing it when you're in a pinch and to save a little bit of money. At least have something rather than nothing. So I'm going to use my pattern that I have a half of and on the cut on fold marking, I'm going to put it up against um, my edge here. Now I'm going to add a little bit extra because I didn't add my seam allowance and where it's on the fold, it's going to be half when I open that. So I'm just gonna snug that up and leave a little extra room. Um, if you don't have a cutting board and a rotary cutting blade here, you can go ahead and use scissors, which nothing wrong with that. I'm just going to use what I have for simplicity's sake. And I'm going to use my ruler here just to keep my pattern flat, otherwise you can pin it um, to your fabric. I'm just looking for some shortcuts today because I am on a time pinch because my daughter will be home from school. So I don't have all day to do this. So I'm just going to cut all around my pattern and I will meet you then. All right, so now we are going to move the fabric out of the way. And what you will have when you open it up, because it was cut on the seam, is one nice big solid piece like that. Okay, now one thing I do want to say with the body, so the main one that we just did, is if, I, if this was already my pattern and I know that it works, uh, the completed portion I would be cutting two of these and putting my lining in the middle. So I would um, put some batting or something to thicken it up a little bit so it's nice and crisp against the body. But I'm literally just looking for a template so that when I have him home, I can make my alterations needed to make another one. Um, all right, next part is the side straps. So I'm going to use the finished edge of the bed sheet here. Otherwise, like I have shown, you would be cutting it on a fold so that you have two lengthwise like this and you would fold it in half um, but this bed sheet is already already cut out for me and I'm not too picky with what this looks like so I am just going to cut right through here and the only reason I use my ruler 
is so that I can hold it down and keep my fingers out of the way. And there we go, and I'm gonna go straight up like so. All right, so I now have one strap, and then this here I'd just be folding in to finish it. And I'm going to cut my second strap, which I'll move this back over, and to put my initial strap here like this, as a gauge and a little marker, just so that both straps are fairly even, but I'm not very picky. I just want something to get me by. Here we go. I got my two straps for the sides. Woo! All right, so after I said that, I really should just cut my second piece right now um, because I can just modify this existing one. So let me finish this as my end result, and then I can modify the size later just by adding some extra Velcro or longer Velcro if needed. So I'm just going to cut my second piece of the body out here. I'm going to lay my already cut out piece uh, just because it's the right size. And here we go. Cut a second one out. That way I have it. I can finish it. And I don't need to pull all of my sewing stuff out a second time. But where he might be wearing this for a little while I might do a couple more in different colors and styles just so it can be a little fashion and I might even have some scrap pieces to the dresses that I'm making and I can have a matching outfit with Zeus how cool would that be super cute I mean he is a boy and my dresses are girly but I can match my dog <laughs> all right now I have two pieces so now I'm gonna grab some quilt batting. Okay, so here is my quilt batting. So it's not too fluffy, it's actually um, an iron-on, so I can iron it into my pieces, and that way it'll be a little easier to sew together. Um, I'm just using some scrap pieces that I have because I make quilts as well. Um, so I have these pieces on hand. Otherwise, you can double the thickness of your fabric if you want, make a couple extra pieces with your bed sheet, uh, or use some flannel bed sheets in between, just whatever scraps you have that might be a little thicker. Um, some sweaters are a little thicker too. The idea is you're just looking to stiffen up your fabric so that it lays flat on your dog and doesn't constantly move around. Compared to his little costume here, it's just two pieces of flannel-like fabric stuck together, so it's very flexible, like it moves around a lot. And I'm just looking for it to be a little stiffer on his back, kind of more like a jacket. So I'm going to cut my batting out. I have it folded in half so that when I unfold it, it's one nice big piece. And I only need one piece of my batting here for the middle. I'm going to sandwich it between my two pieces that I've already cut out. So I'm just using my fabric as my template. And I'm just going to cut this out following my fabric. Now if I was making a super fancy garment or if I was going to be selling them, I would pin them to make sure they're nice and even. But I'm really not looking to make a competition or anything. It doesn't need to be super professional. <laughs> I just want to make it work with what I have. And that way, if it's not very good, then it doesn't matter. All right, now I'm going to cut two pieces. I don't know if this scrap piece is good enough. Hmm, not really. I might have another one here. There we go with a folded edge. So this basically, your piece that you already cut out, if you cut it out on a fold, it would open up like this, so a nice big piece. That's what it does when you cut it on a fold. So I need two of these, and it doesn't have to be on the fold, but let me show you a trick. If you cut it on the fold, there we go. Now I can open it up and cut down the fold and now I got my two pieces that's if you wanted to um, line it I just realized I already have these sewn together so I don't really need this you know I can't I 
can't fit it in there. I'd actually have to put this inside out. <laughs> I didn't need these pieces. So I could put it inside out. I might still do that. Put this inside out. I'll iron it to it. Because it's iron on. And then I will take it back inside out and finish my edges. So I actually need this to be a little smaller because I already have a folded seam. So my insert here is going to be too big. So I'm just going to line up my seam and just cut off my extra. And it can be a little smaller. I don't I don't mind that. So it's about yeah, about a half an inch too big. So I'm going to line these up. My cutting board here has marker markings on them. So I'm just going to snip away a half an inch. And I need a little bit less on my sides here as well. About a half an inch too. Line that up and take my half an inch. There we go. So now I can take my piece here and iron it on like so and then I will turn it back inside out so that my white fuzzy is on the inside just for a little bit of extra strength and um, rigidness if you can call it that so let me go iron these together and I will show you what that looks like okay so I am going to iron my pieces first so that they are nice and flat like this one here I do have to put my phone down so I can make sure I get my edges nice and straight. And then we are going to apply the iron-on interfacing over our piece and iron that on. So now that I ironed my main fabric piece, I'm going to put my interfacing over top and I'm going to... Sorry, I might need two hands here. I just need to iron this with my other hand. <laughs> And now you are going to iron on your interfacing where it does have a sticky layer and that way when it's ironed it is stuck to it and then I can turn it inside out. So I'm going to do the same with my other strap here and the main body piece as well. It should look something like this. You want to put your wrong side spacing so I have my good side of the fabric on the outer side and I have my sticky. It's kind of rougher because it's actually the glue before it's melted um, that against the fabric and that is how it will adhere together so go ahead press your iron into it get it to stick all around and do that for one piece of the the body provide you with a trick so that your iron doesn't stick to the flannel part here of your interfacing you can lay another piece of fabric uh, it doesn't have to be the exact same size you can just lay a bed sheet over it and um, your iron will float and glide nicely over top of it instead of sticking and gripping to the flannel as you're trying to get it to stick to the fabric underneath. So just get that ironed on. And another thing you can do is instead of putting your fabric first, you can put your interfacing with the glue facing up and then lay your fabric over top of it. These are all just personal preferences to however you want to do it but you just want to get it sewn afterwards. So just iron it together and get your pieces nice and ready. Okay, so now that my main fabric piece has been ironed to my interfacing, um, I just have a little extra interfacing over the edges, so I'm just going to cut away the extra so it's not so bulky when I sew my, my pieces together. You can use scissors if you don't have a rotary cutter, that is no problem. Just make sure you're using nice sharp scissors so that it can cut through nice and easy. And a little bit over here. Alright, so now that that is cut out, I am going to lay my other piece um, with the wrong side over it. Like this. And 
Now I might, you can either have it as a, a rough edge on the outer side. I think I want to have a nice finished edge rather than folding it over and then having my seam. So I'm actually going to put my fabrics right side together and I'm going to leave a little opening at the bottom so that I can pull it through afterwards. And that way I will have a nice seam on the inside. Just make it look a little finished. So I am going to go ahead, I'm just matching up my piece here as much as I can. So I am going to pin it on all the sides that I'm going to sew it together. So I'm going to pin it all the way around. And at the bottom, let me show you the bottom here, down here, I'm going to leave, say about five inches, roughly, and I'm not going to sew between these two. So just so I know that, I'm going to use a different pin and just put it sideways so I know that I need to stop right there with my sewing machine. And that is going to be the opening that I'm going to pull this through and that'll look a lot better. So I'm just gonna keep pinning all around the other sides where I'm going to be sewing it on the machine. Okay, now I also have my strap pieces that I'm going to turn uh, the right side in this time. Like this with my interfacing, like that, nice and stiff. I'm going to cut off my extra interfacing fabric that's sticking out. Um, just where I had a little extra on that one and I'm going to do the same with the other. Now I want this to be sandwiched in between uh, the body piece. Uh, I don't know if they did that on this one or not. Yes, they did. So it's in between the two sides. So I need to put this in between my pins before I sew my main pieces together. All right, now I should have left it inside out and sewn one of the seams first so that when I pull it um, right side in again, I already have a finished edge. So I am going back in and I'm just going to flip these back. I've already trimmed out the excess interfacing, so that's fine. And I am going to sew along my side here. So I'll just pin it so that you can see, otherwise it's stiff enough. I feel like I don't even need to in it but just so you know where I will be sewing. So right along this side here and I'm going to do a half an inch seam allowance. So let me go zip zip that on the machine and then pull this inside out and show you what it looks like. Alrighty I'm back! So I sewed along my side here. I don't know if you can see that on camera. That's kind of fuzzy. You can kind of see the little line here. So that's where I sewed so that now when I flip it, I think this is called right side up. I always get confused with that. Right side in, I don't know. But the proper way, now that I flip it the proper way, there we go, and I can iron this. Got my little corner stuck in there. I might, don't know where my pokey stick is. Might be able to use some round scissors here. As long as I don't poke my fabric. My husband's very good to me. He likes to sharpen all my scissors and my knives for me. I'm kind of dangerous with blades, they kind of scare me a little. Not that I've really cut myself really bad. Although I did while I was making my dresses, I was using my little rotor cutter and the blade fell off because I need a new one of these, they're worn out. So my little part that holds my blade on fell off and I went right into the side of my finger. I don't know if you can still kind of see it. It's my middle finger. Yeah, not really. But I cut right into the cuticle. I don't know how it didn't gush out blood, but hmm, I'm safe. So anyways, needless to say, I don't like blades because I injure myself with them. But now I flip this in, ta-da! So there is strap number one and strap number two. Now I got both. So now I need to sandwich these in between my pinned area. So let me show you. 
Okay, so I am going to line it up as to where I need it to be. So I'm lining over the main uh, little butterfly pattern that I used here, and I'm just finding where where the straps go. Just roughly. Doesn't need to be too perfect, but obviously the more accurate it is right off the start, the better it will be. So I'm just going ahead and lining that up. Now you can use um, a marker or I have one of those friction pens that you can mark over top of fabric and then it'll iron off or you just kind of rub it off. You can use one of those, but ah, this works fine. All right, so this is where they need to go. Now I need to think about this for a minute because I get turned around really easily in person for directions and doing the same thing with fabric also gets me all turned around and I get confused. So I have to think about this for a minute as to when I pull this inside out or right side in. <laughs> uh, but I have it on the right side and I'm pretty sure this is exactly where I need it, right? So this is gonna be my inside because I put my right side against that. I just think that, let me think about it. Now, I'm pretty sure this is right. So my yellow fabric here is right sides together. My interfacing is on this side here. I think this is right. I think, but maybe it should go on the interfacing. Mm. The top will be the bottom. Let me see, I have the top it's there. This is the bottom. When I flip it, let me use a corner here. When I go to flip it, that will then be on, I don't know, let me think some more. Oh, yeah, I'm pretty sure this is right. So over top of this part here, I have my right sides together for my yellow interfacings on the bottom. Straps need to go on the inside because this is the seam. So when I flip this inside out, I will have these sticking out. I am pretty sure. If not, you will hear about it. And I hope that you watch this video in full before you start doing this yourself so that you can watch me make my mistakes so that you don't make the same mistakes. I'm literally going along and winging this because I have never made one of these. But it is kind of fun. I'm actually having fun with this. And then if this works and the pattern works, then I can make him some more. All right, so let me take this to my sewing machine and I'm going to sew along my edge needles that I've pinned and leaving about four to five inches on the bottom here so I can pull it through. All right, moment of truth. So I have sewn around all of my edges and we are going to pull through uh, that little opening that we left four to five inches and we are gonna pull this through and this is when I find out if I messed up with the straps or not. So be very interesting. Me have no sense in direction whatsoever. In fact, my six-year-old has better sense of direction than I do. She'll usually go, uh, mommy, are we going the wrong way? And then I think, uh, actually, yeah, we might be. Sure enough, we are. Sometimes it's as easy as just using like a public restroom and then you come out and you're like, uh, did I go left or did I go right? I don't remember. Well, my kid knows more than I do. She really have signs, you know, that point. On the floor, you know, they could do those little distance, what is it with COVID, keep, I can't even remember, four feet apart, three feet apart, something like that. They can do that with like little exit signs. Cash, this way. Check out, that way, you know? Make it so much easier for us. Us, I mean me. Did I get this? Oh, I didn't. Look, it's stuck on the inside. I got no straps. Okay, so I'm gonna have to think about this some more. I know it seems really simple to some of you and you're like, ah, oh, you gotta do it on that side, but I can't think when I gotta start flipping things. I get so disoriented just by thinking about it. So I got a stitch rip, but luckily I just, you know, take this back, inside out. And what I should do, meh, got a stitch rip. It's a good thing I have a stitch ripper. So, I don't know, I still gotta think about this. This is me, stitch ripping. Takes forever sometimes. All right, now that I've stitch ripped it, 
because I'm spending so much time trying to figure out the logic when you flip something, I'm just gonna put it the right side and watch this. Okay, now I'm gonna get my camera to stay. Well, okay, let me think. This has got to be in here like this, right? So I'm going to pin this. Oh, I left my pins by my sewing machine. So I'm going to pin this like this. And same with the other side. I'm gonna shove that in the hole. Cause I didn't stitch rip the whole thing. I just stitch ripped where these were going. Okay, I'm gonna pin this and then I'm gonna put it inside out and then I'm gonna sew this again. And then I will have it at the right side. So let's see what it is. Pin, 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 pin. Alrighty, this one is pinned. La dee dee da. Let's get the other one in here. I don't need it to be exactly where I'm going to have it because I'm going to put it inside out. I lost it. And then I'm going to figure out how it was actually supposed to be. So let's figure it out. Let's see here. Without stabbing myself. Oh. No, I still, I still don't get it. One moment. I'm going to have to pull the whole thing through. Okay. I think I kind of get it. And I was not even close. But I was right with the fact that it was going to be, you know, inwards instead of sticking out. So there it is. Well, sugar, huh? How did I do that? Okay. Now I know where it needs to be. And I can't even get to my pins. So let me just make sure I got my pins out. Yow! Okay. There it is. Lay it flat. Now let me just see. Well, I still don't get it because I'm pretty sure that's what I already did. But it must not have been. Oh, in between them. It goes... Yeah. In between the top and the bottom fabric, not laid over top of, you know, one of the sides. Okay, I get it. Now, I don't know if I'll remember this for next time, but... <laughs> Alright, there we go. Ta-da! Alright, let me fish through here. Let's go fishing, let's go fishing. And... I don't want to get my finger. There. Okay. And I'm going to line this one up too. So that I get a nice finish. There we go. Pin this as well. Alright, to the sewing machine I go to re-sew these straps on. Okay, moment of truth. Now let's see. Man, if I didn't get this, something is severely wrong. I hope. It should be. I hope. Let's see. Yay! There we go. Phew! Now I do need to add the Velcro pieces, which I should have done, but I was more concerned about trying to figure this part out more than anything. So I am going to iron this uh, nice and flat, get all my little corners and seams out. And then I'm going to go in the bottom here and flip my seam like this. Ta-da! And pin it which I might actually do right now. No, I'm not, because my pins are by my sewing machine again. But um, I'm gonna pin my hole and then I'm going to do a little seam here. You can do an invisible stitch by hand, like you would with stitches, but I just wanna get this thing done before my kid gets home from school. And I still have the bum part to do, which I have no template for, so I'm gonna have to tweak and figure that out. So let's just get this ironed and get it sewn.
Okay, so now the next step is the Velcro. So using my little butterfly template here, um, let me see here, this is going to be the belly, and that's the belly. So Velcro on this side needs to be on the back. So I got my Velcro piece here. Let me just cut, I don't know, like yay much. Whoop. I'm gonna need another one for the other side, which I don't know, that one's already kind of cut, so I'll just use that. And let me see. Uh, okay, rough side on one, so the prickly part. And I'm gonna say about yay there. Put a pin in it. Now the reason I should have sewn the Velcro before I did these, which wouldn't have really worked because they were already uh, two layers sewn together, but um, it would have prevented, oh actually, you know what? They have it there too with the, the seam, but you could have sandwiched it on your fabric first and then you wouldn't have even seen the Velcro seam on the other side here. But anywho, okay, so on that side, and now on the other side, it goes on the top. So right here, and just make sure they kind of match up with my distance there. Okay, so right here. Now, because I don't know what size he is, maybe I should have added another little piece. I don't know. Hmm, would have been nice if I had a longer strip, and then it kind of opened up more, more possibilities, you know? A little bit more sizing options. Yeah, I'm going to do that. I'm not going to go by this butterfly with that part because if he is a little skinnier in the belly than his little costume is, then I want to have that option to tighten it. So I'm going to do a bigger piece of Velcro. I have it. Velcro's fairly cheap. You know, it's a matter of like pennies. Although they don't have pennies anymore, so maybe I should say like five cents. Okay, and same thing on the other one. I'm going to put this longer strip da, 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 right here. And then I still have the top as well, which I will put slightly longer pieces for. This will just allow me to size it. Okay, now for the top, Velcro's on the bottom. I'm going to use this scrap piece right here. So rough part. I'm going to go right there. And the other side is on the top. So I've got my rough piece. And, oh, where did I put it? Over here. And fuzzies over here. And a little bit of the same distance on both sides. And I hope this fits them. Otherwise, it is literally just a matter of adding more Velcro to wherever I need it. I probably wouldn't even stitch rip that because as he grows, this might fit him. Not that I hope he ever ends up in a surgery later on, but you never know. Injuries happen. Okay, and then that'll like go like that. This will go like that. All right, let's go sew the Velcro. Okay, so it is complete. So now it'll fasten like this around his neck here and then this part here will go around his body. It's a little bit of wider velcro so I can tighten it if need be and that's his little back cape. And now I gotta figure out how to make a little velcro attachment for the bum portion or I might even use buttons. I might do a little bit of both velcro and buttons so that the velcro doesn't just tear apart because Zeus is a very smart dog and I can see him figuring out, you know, just grab a hold of the bum part and yank it off. So maybe buttons would be a good idea, but I got to do a little bit of research and see how exactly that works so I can come up with something. And I don't have Zeus here to measure the distance down his back on how much extra I need to go around the tail and so on. So I'm going to have to research this a little bit, but otherwise, that's the initial cape. Da, 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 da. Okay, here's my little template, and now my idea is this is going to be a piece of fabric. I'm going to do the same thing, um, just two different pieces faced together, sewn together, so that I have some fabric, and this will lay over the dog. So let's say the dog is in the middle, this is his back. 
uh, his body goes in between and this template that I cut out is for the belly. Now my idea is that I'm going to need my straps for the belly that I have to button and velcro to the belly fabric of my template here. And then I'm going to have these that will fold over onto the back with buttons and velcro and his tail will stick out right here. Now I did it this way because I don't think this is long enough to cover his full back all the way to his bum. So it's a lot easier for me to add straps to these pieces later and um, just sew them together and adjust them. So this will be the main piece and I can add um, some extra straps with buttons that will attach to this to the body piece. Um, but this gives me at least my template that I can have ready before Zeus gets home and it'll take me a lot less time to make two straps to button to this belly piece uh, than it would be to do this whole thing while he's home. So I'm just going to cut out my fabric pieces, my um, interfacing as well and the reason I want interfacing is because I want to protect his little manly hood so that little bit of thickness will prevent him from biting in between the fabric and into his little stitches so by having some interfacing it just thickens it up a little bit adds some cushion so that his teeth can't really penetrate through the fabric onto his skin where his incisions are okay so I have my template up against my folded seam because I'm gonna be folding my template and um, cutting it out against the seam here like this. Um, I was just thinking though, I ended up cutting this out because I have to account for the fact that he's a boy and I don't want him peeing in this. So my idea with this is I'm gonna lengthen these straps right now instead of making separate straps and I can cut them later if they are way too long. Um, but it's easier to just make buttonholes as my fabric is already there. If it's too long, it's easy to cut. So I'm gonna lengthen this down and these these will be extended but the idea is it will flip over and this little pocket will be what kind of hugs his little manliness in and i know his little wee wee parts um are a little closer to the belly so this will give me a little bit of allowance and his little wee wee can stick out and this will be his belly and then these two straps on the belly will be what hook on to the inner part right here so this is what i'm going for so that'll fasten to that there and um, yeah, it'll be open on the belly so he still has some room to pee and this will make a pocket for his manly parts that got cut off <laughs> and his tail can come out through here. I think this will be my best rough template and um, yeah, my little markings for buttons. So I'm going to cut this out and get this prepped. Okay, so now I have my two pieces cut out. And I am going to cut out one piece out of my interfacing. Okay, now I'm going to iron out my ripples just in my fabric piece that I have cut out. And then just like before, I'm going to put my interfacing fabric with the sticky rough side onto the wrong side of the fabric. And I'm going to leave this little seam here because I'm pretty sure I'm going to be cutting that out anyways. And then we will lay our other piece over top to sew it. Okay, now I have my right sides together, interfacing on the back, and I have pinned and I will sew all along the edges, da, 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 all the way down and across, and I'm going to leave this open so that I can then, in the end, pull my fabric through this hole to bring it right sides, I don't know, right side in. <laughs> Okay, so now I hope this is right. So I have sewn my pieces together, right sides together, and I am going to fish it through my hole that I left. Grab it. I do have a fabric feeder if I need it. I can kind of squeeze my fingers through to the end here and pull it through the hole. And I'm going to do that with all four sides. That's really tedious. Let's go fishing, let's go fishing. Okay, got it. Got it. Okay. Boop. I 
see the little groundhog? Boop. Okay. And the other two. Okay, so this is my little fishing hook. So you plop it through your hole and you go and grab your fabric. It's like a little fishing rod. And if you grabbed it correctly, you can then pull your fabric through. And this just helps if it's a little tighter, which because of the interfacing, it is. But I did do all my three other sides. This one was just really hard. But I like this because now I have a pokey stick and I can go up through the hole and just poke my little corners out. See? And just poke them out. Doop, doop, doop. You could use little chopsticks too. You have little chopsticks. So there's one. Doop, doop, doop. Two corners, and then on that other side. And then I'm going to iron this nice and flat. Afterwards, and then, pokey, pokey, pokey. Almost there. Mm. There we go. There. Ta-da! Okay, I'm gonna iron this and then we have to sew the little hole up just like we did earlier where you fold your seam in and then you pin it and then you sew it flat to cover your hole. Okay, so here is my finished result here. So this is going to be his head sticking out here. It will lay over his body. His little wee wee is going to be somewhere around here. And I'm going to have this come underneath. His wee wee will stick out wherever it needs to. And I will have the buttons and velcro on these two straps to stick to the underneath here. And so it'll lay something like this, and then this will come up and over with buttons and Velcro and a hole for his tail covering his little manly sack there. So I am just going to put some random pieces of Velcro for now um, on this underside here for the belly. And I'm going to put some strips here as well so that it's ready to fasten wherever it needs to be. And then same with the top, I'm just going to put some strips of Velcro along the sides that this will then fasten to. Just so that it is somewhat ready. Now, I have one side that's slightly longer for the straps, which I did that because I didn't quite know where everything was going to line up. Um, yeah, I'm not really sure how long his body is. That's my only downfall, is I don't know. So it might sit more like this, potentially, with his tail, his tail way over here. The idea is these straps are going to come snug up against his tail, and the rest is going to fasten. So we might have some coveralls here happening. I'm not too sure about that. Um, but yeah, whatever length I need, I am a little more equipped with some extra length. So I'm just going to line that up probably like this. I mean, I'm really not sure how long he is, but let me see if I put Velcro. Yeah, it won't really matter. It'll be universal. If Vel Velcro is up on this side and on the other side right here, then it doesn't matter how I put this piece lengthwise. Whatever straps I need the longest, it will be ready for. Okay, so here is the final result. So this is going to go around his neck and this will Velcro into place. His head will stick out there. Pretend the ironing board is his body. Underneath, I have some Velcro here, which will fasten to his belly like that. That's size adjustable. And then, 
for his little diaper here. So depending on the length of the straps, I'm going to pretend that his body is a lot longer than this because it very well may be. I'm gonna fasten that there, which I will later reinforce with buttons um, once I know exactly what length this needs to be. His tail will stick out right here, so I'm going to make sure that uh, this part here is up against his tail. I left a little bit of room to scoop around where his manly parts just got operated on. And then coming out under the belly, it's going to Velcro to the front here, like so. And depending on um, the, the belly width here, if this is tighter, then it will go a lot closer and this will be at the proper width. So these sides here might need uh, more Velcro depending on where his belly sits just so that I have this at the right distance for the straps. And then this part here will hopefully his wee wee will stick out here and then this hole here will have his little tail and scooping his little manly balls that just got chopped a little bit. So hopefully this works, fingers crossed. But my little Zeus is going to look like a banana. Okay, so I now have this on Zeus. Um, I did have to add a little bit extra on the belly because he was actually a little bigger around than his little fairy costume was. And now for the back, because we don't want him touching the tail. So I have this Velcroed on. So this was the main piece which allows his tail to hang out. And I made this little flap cover with Velcro that just sticks to the top. So this is removable later if he doesn't need that. And for the straps that go under his belly that we're supposed to attach to the belly portion right here, um, they're too short. So what I'm actually going to do is use an elastic which measured 10 inches from underneath of his little manly hood to the belly. So I have a 10 inch elastic and I cut out 13 inches for this strip here and I'm going to sew the elastic in which will scrunch the fabric up and that'll give him a little bit of room so that when he's going up the stairs and moving his legs uh, this little bodysuit will flex a little bit so let's see how that goes okay so here's how I'm sewing this strip so I took my fabric piece and I put them right sides together so I'm going to put this right sides together like this which creates the fold Sorry, one-handed here, like this. And I attach, so this has the, the extra edge here, which I'm, I'm not going to sew this, because that's what I'm going to use to pull my fabric uh, right sides out. And I'm just going to sew this part of the elastic when I'm doing this seam, and I'm going to go along just the fabric right sides together, flip it inside out with this hole, and then sew it shut afterwards. Okay, so now I sewed the elastic and the outer seam right here. So this part here, the outer seam, and I just pinned my very end on one side for the elastic, which I'm going to go back and forth and reinforce, and then pull it inside out. So it will look like this. Now I will pull this through a little hole. Okay, so now for the elastics, I'm going to fasten them to the bottom of the bum. Uh, this was the flap for the butthole <laughs> and the tail. And um, these elastics, I'm just going to go ahead and sew right along this. And that way it'll flip over and I'll have a nice clean finish like this right here. And then I can attach the other end to the body piece. Okay, so here it is now that it's sewn together. Now it's got some elastic and this portion here I am now going to attach to the belly part of... Um, his little bodysuit.